grade one, I can remember being uh, kept in school, uh, police having uh, uh, you know, cordoned off areas. Uh, but the PQ got in, and I think it was a shock. School. Of course, you got into high school, you certainly became more aware of the political situation. If I was going to make a go at it and have a profession, then it was going to be even twice as hard to do it if I stayed in Montreal. Will you stay or will you leave? And every time we say farewell to another friend, we grieve as one by one. We become a scattered family from our little island surrounded by a sea. We had um, lots of families with lots of kids and uh, we knew everyone on our street. Uh, we went to an all-English school, everyone we knew was English. We had um, Italians, we had Greeks, we had everything else in our school, but we didn't have French. Growing up on 51st, it was pretty much 99.9% .9 an English-speaking neighborhood. And that could be said for most of Western Lachine. It was a lot like um, many of the other streets in Lachine, you know, just uh, rows and rows of duplexes or apartments and, or small houses, and everyone on that street um, spoke English. There was great things. I mean, we used to we used to take the bus down to the Forum and down to Atwater Station to to hang out just to see the people going by and people watch and eat pogos. <laughs> at this really greasy pogo stand. It was an English-speaking community, and uh, that, that was it. You know, when I was 16, I got a job at um, McDonald's, and I needed to learn, I needed to know French for that job, supposedly, but I mean, all you had to know was uh, Big Mac, Gross Frit kind of thing, and that was it, so. I was probably, I'd like to say 15 years old, when, when a, a French-speaking family first moved on to 51st. We don't know them. We didn't know them, but we knew they were French because it spread through the neighborhood that we had a French family on our street. So we, you know, we were aware that the differences were there. But honestly, I don't think we paid that much attention to them. I think that we were really sort of protected for, from it to a certain extent growing up. And then 76 rolled around. When it happened, it wasn't whether I'd stay or go. It was like, what the heck has happened? But the PQ got in, and I think it was a shock, to put it mildly, to a lot of people. Whether it was a big enough shock to make them slap a for sale sign on their lawn in the middle of the night and get their brother-in-law's truck and head for the Ontario border, there was probably some of that. All of a sudden going into stores in downtown Montreal where they wouldn't speak English to you, and that was, that was an eye-opener. That hadn't happened before. And uh, it was, I think that was the beginning of starting to feel like we didn't belong anymore. I remember the, 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 the flow of head offices that suddenly decided, you know, Toronto looks a little bit better than Montreal. See, this is where I didn't notice a change. Uh, maybe I was just too young for that, but I didn't, you know, the, the French and English, there was never, that was never really a factor for me. It did change, and, and it was, by the time I left, I remember walking down St. Catherine Street and there were lots of shops boarded up. Suddenly you started hearing the two words you would hear out west. Kevin, that I met through, uh, through Val, uh, he and I decided we were going to uh, see what was out west. We started hearing, you know, you hear the old stories, you know, the, oh, go to, go to Calgary, go to Edmonton. Streets are paved with gold. The streets were just uh, lined with gold. You know, Calgary streets were paved with gold. And whether the streets were paved with gold or not really didn't matter. I think what mattered to, to a lot of people who went was that they didn't have to bother to learn to speak 
a language that they really didn't see any point in speaking. And um, everyone that we knew had either heard or knew of someone who was com going at, coming up to Calgary. So by that time I'd already predetermined I would be, I'd be heading west. And so we decided we were going to give it a try. I think it was easier for me to come at West than other people because I'd had that uh, history that I'd been at West before and had relatives. So they were going out West and that was sort of a, why not? Calgary, 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 there's oil in my backyard. So we arrived in Calgary in the, um, the spring of 79, and um, early spring of 79, and we had already actually uh, obtained some employment in Banff for the summer. We, uh, Val and Karen and I, two of my girlfriends and I, we worked in the Wedgwood shop. Actually, Karen didn't. Val and I worked in the Wedgwood shop on uh, Banff Avenue, uh, one of the retail stores, and uh, Karen and, and um, uh, Steve, who eventually became Val's husband, uh, worked at the, golf, at the Banff Springs Golf Course. So Karen and Carol and me and Steve, we are all in Banff for the summer. And then in the fall we all got a place in Calgary. Kevin and uh, Val and uh, Carol, myself. Well, I came out uh, with a girlfriend and we came out by plane and I got in touch with Carol. I'd, had, I'd been in touch with her before so I actually lived on her, uh, on her couch for a while. The first impression I had of Calgary was I'd never seen a boom town before. The reception was pretty cool. I'm not going to say that the reception was universally bad. There were times, there were times when you got the, you got the look. What are you doing out here? And that was also during the time of Ralph Klein going, the Eastern bums can get back on the bus and go home. We paid our rent in cash because that's what they wanted. We couldn't get a telephone because unless you had an address that you could prove that you had lived at for upwards of, of, a, of a year, I think, you had to give them a, a cash deposit to get a phone in your, in your home. So, you know, we weren't, uh, we kept quiet about where we were from and just didn't make it an issue. So. Well, this is a letter that I received uh, from my mother in uh, April of 1979, a short while after I'd moved to Calgary uh, with Kevin. Um, and uh, Valerie was still back in Montreal, planning uh, to visit sometime later in the spring. And my mother goes on to say, um, when I arrived home from work on Friday, there was your letter, tossed on the porch floor with our usual bills. I spotted the yellow envelope right away. Happy to hear you're settled into your place and taking good care of your stomach. Who does the cooking, you or Kevin? How do you like working for a living? Sounds, sounds like hard work to me, but I'm glad that you both found jobs. I see your brother strolling across the street. I think he misses you just like the rest of us. Everybody's asking, will you stay or will you leave? Calgary's Classic Rock, Q107. I'm Terry DeWance, along with Peppermint Patty. I had grown up all my life with the French and the English and the referendums and them asking the same questions over and over and over and over, never getting an answer they liked. To be perfectly frank, I didn't get along with one person who was running the place. He didn't like me, I didn't like him. By a sea. 